So, like a lot of all of you, you seek professional results in an at-home setting. Well, let me show you one way to achieve that in small batches in a non-metallic paint. The reason why I mention non-metallic paint is because metallic is a little bit meticulous. You tend to want to spray the whole car or the whole project at once. Solid colors are a bit more forgiving. But keep in mind, you want to spray out of the same can of paint. You don't want to buy a quart here, spray it today, buy another quart next week and spray it then. Many things have changed. Weather, humidity, all kinds of things. The toners and the paints could be just a slight bit different, a little bit heavier, a little bit lighter, then your color is not going to quite match. Okay? Now let me show you something with the Summit single stage paint. So what we're looking at here is the reflection in the camera. Can you read the bottle in the reflection of the camera? Now the lens on my camera is totally butchered from all the welding and embers I've thrown into it while grinding panels out and cutting panels out. But as you can see here, I mean, you can see me moving around, you see the lights in the background, see my helper's head over there. All this stuff is very key. I mean, this is, this is what you wanna look for. If you're going to buy a car or anything, you should be able to see clearly the reflection of whatever's in the background in that paint. Now, it does have orange peel. This is acceptable. This is slightly better than a factory finish, I feel. Um, but, it actually, it looks a lot better than that. If you look at a brand new Jeep, that finish looks like garbage. I mean, this is right off the gun. There's no buffing. It's still flashing. I mean, this is, it's not perfect. It's not show quality, but it is freaking nice for right off the gun and in a garage. Man. We've got our Summit. 300G classic black single stage. We got our activator, Nason or Nason producer, wax and grease remover. These are the products I used in line to get that finish. You know, and then it goes without saying, I had to spray primer. I used Evercoat Feather Fill, great stuff. You could have used any type of urethane primer, anything would have been fine. Um, but the key to a flat finish is the wet sanding or just sanding period and getting the orange peel out of your uh, primer and knowing how to dial in that PSI on your gun and just knowing your equipment being aware of what your stuff has done you really just have to get out there and test your stuff out and see how it works it's taken me a long time to be able to achieve as good a finish as I've gotten here with what equipment I have. Now, I didn't start with this gun. I started with the Purple Plum or the Harbor Freight little gun that you could get for eight or nine dollars and a starting line set of guns, which is by far the cheapest set of Devilbus guns they offer. They're absolute garbage. In fact, I've got one here. This is the starting line gun, okay? This is the biggest turd, along with the other two that come with it. They're really not worth keeping or spraying with. I keep the small one just in case I need to do something that's like epoxy primer and I need to do a very small piece or something and kind of keep it as a throwaway. Uh, honestly, I bought a $30 gun off of Amazon for detail stuff that is way better than that gun. But back to the point when spraying and trying to get a great finish with at-home equipment, what you want to do is wet the floor down. You want to, uh, what I do is create a little bit of a, create a bit of a draft. I'll open one garage door and open the next garage door you know, a third of the way up and I'll put a fan on one side. So hopefully it carries everything out one door 
and I keep wetting the floor down. Every time it gets a little bit dry, I keep the hose in here and I'll wet it down. That keeps the dust out of the air. I keep a, a LED light over my area that I'm painting if possible. It's not always possible. Try to do that. They have those uh, lights that you can put on the end of the gun. Those are great. You can use those too. Hell yeah, brother. Y'all about to paint in here? Let me show you something. When mixing your paint, okay, you always want to mix it in a gyrating motion, okay? None of this, huh, 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 you know, back and forth. You want to gyrate, okay? Get in to your buns of steel motion, okay? You hear what I'm saying? Buns of steel, okay? You think I got hair like this because I jabbed that thing? No, sir. We don't put bubbles in our paint. You got to gyrate and gyrate. And then you want that paint to relax, be flat, and a little Bud Weezer. Okay, I know it ain't enough, but God dang, I only got one can. I ain't gonna dump it all. Okay, all right, I'll put a little more in there. Shit. And gyrate and gyrate. Sweet home Alabama. Boo -boo. Gonna give it the one, two, three. Oh. Here's my little bitty Harbor Freight air compressor. 27 gallon, 200 PSI max compressor. It's oilless, meaning you don't add oil to the compressor. Uh, I don't understand the technology, to be honest. I didn't even look into it. I just know that if you've seen my old video, I used to have the 21 gallon central pneumatic compressor, and it was super loud. This was uh, a fortress compressor, and what kind of turned me on to even looking into one of these is that my nephew has a little small kind of pancake hot dog style compressor. I mean, the whole thing's like this big, and it is so quiet, it, it's not even as loud as your phone ringing beside you standing right next to it. Now, this isn't quite as quiet as that, but it is light years ahead of quietness on the 21 gallon. Now, something you may see is the uh, air water separator and the oil separator there. I can't remember which one's which here, but I keep it in line. Not that this has oil, I don't have that problem, but I do spray at other workshops sometimes where they don't have an air dryer. So this is nice to have in line. It has a little petcock here you can twist, let your air out, and water, mostly to let the water out, okay? That's the purpose but you're gonna get air too. Don't freak out, it's part of the deal. Um, you know, you got the specs here. You can look that up on Harbor Freight's website and see if that works for you. Honestly, I'm an application type of dude. Um, I've got a, a paint gun that's meant for a big air compressor, like a 60 gallon, like production shop, collision shop type deal. Uh, but this runs fine if I want to do a panel, if I want to jam a car, if I want to do primer, this works well. Okay, so when mixing this paint, Summit Racing single stage anyways, you need to have some reducer. You can use the Summit brand reducer or what I used was the Nason 441-21. Full base reducer, you know. You may be able to use other stuff, Omni brand, Shop, Shop Line, whatever, by PPG, whatever. Um, but basically, what you need to do is you mix four parts paint, one parts activator, and then you're gonna wanna do one parts reducer. Now, if you don't add that reducer, it is gonna spray out and look like the fattest tangerine orange peel you've ever had. Gee, what'll they think of next? Maybe you can get a little better results with a professional setup, like a collision style shops, air compressor and air supply and all that stuff. But with a shop setup, small like this in a home garage, you need everything at the advantage that you can get. So reducing that down is gonna play a big part in that. It's absolutely necessary. I mean, if you don't do it, yeah, I can almost guarantee you it's gonna look like the dog's ass. Wow, look at that. Yeah, I did it myself. Add that, and that, and that, all together, 411. If you do that, it should look pretty good. Now, you need to have yourself a test panel 
about that long on your piece of cardboard or paper or whatever and let it give it a few seconds see if it runs man i always get the runs you know adjust your fan pattern whatever you need to do i have a piece of cardboard over there that i always use or you know people order enough amazon stuff nowadays you always got cardboard sitting around but the the big idea is that you can get professional results and what i have here that i'm showing you here what in the world is he pointing at is very good results especially for a home workshop now there are nibs and little pieces of dirt nib is basically a piece of trash on the surface of the paint those things can be wet sanded out Anyways, the wax and grease remover here is in your preparation. When it's still in primer right before you spray, always wipe it down with wax and grease remover because if you've got sweat off your hands, spit if you farted or something, anything that would contaminate the surface, that should get rid of that or give you the best chance of getting rid of that. Then you let it air dry or you can blow it dry, give it a few minutes to flash off and get the stink off the surface and that's going to give you the best chance of success. So let's look at the panels that we painted. And keep in mind, I realize it's two small pieces. If you were spraying a hood in your garage, it may or may not be as good of a result, but it depends on you, your familiarity with your technique and your products and your air supply, your PSI on your guns, all that type of stuff is going to play a part in the finish. So you need to be aware of your surroundings and spend a lot of time working with your own your own equipment, your gun, your air compressor, your air supply, your your regulator. Get your PSI right. You know, uh, three bars or 30 PSI at a paint booth may get you great results there, but your air compressor may not be able to keep up with that with a 1.3 tip. You may want to have a 1.0 tip or a 1.1 or a 1.2. Those are all things you may want to try. So keep all that stuff in mind when you're trying to achieve a finish and don't get discouraged. You can do it, man. This stuff is not rocket science. You just believe in yourself. Just get out there and try it. I mean, the only way you're going to figure it out is to get out there and do it, right? So just freaking do it. You can go online and get a quart of this paint for like 35 bucks. You can get the whole gallon for like 70 bucks, depending on the color, on up to 114, I think is the most expensive. It's an absolute steal. I mean, you're not going to get paint like that anywhere else. Now, we've only covered single stage. That's where your color and your clear coat are in the same mix. This is all color and clear in this thing. This is your activator. This is the catalyst. This is what gives it the reaction to harden once you've sprayed it. That's the difference between this and your duplicolor garbage that's on the shelf. If you've ever wondered why you spray that stuff, and you can still dig your fingernails in it the next day or chip it up with a little rock or something like that there's no hardener in that stuff it's not good you can't paint a car with that this is automotive quality and at a hell of a bargain okay hey i just want to say thanks for sticking through this video i'm trying to make you a little short and sweet one for the middle of the week in case you're having a crappy week you know, here we go. I think I put one out two days ago on the Cyclone and painting the engine bay with some rattle can 2K paint that has a hardener, but it's still in an aerosol can. That was really cool. Um, I appreciate you checking it out. And if you want to comment, feel free to do so, whether it's good or bad. I leave all the comments in. You know, I'm not afraid to have your opinion out there. If you don't like it, hey man, let me know what you don't like. If you love it, let me know why you love it. Or if you just want to share your project and your experience, I'd like for it to be a learning experience for everybody. Because you never know who's going to click it at 2 in the morning and go down the YouTube rabbit hole that we all go down. I appreciate it. You know, we're at like 400-something subscribers. This is crazy. I I've tried to turn the monetization off until I get to 1,000 but YouTube makes it near impossible to do that. So if you're watching ads, I'm not getting paid for it. And I apologize. Hopefully one day, you know, we can hit the thousand subscriber mark and I can make a little moolah and maybe get some sponsors and we can start seeing some cool stuff. But up until then, all this stuff I buy with my own money. 
all this stuff. It's all at my expense. And I will be getting a new camera soon and get these little bubbles and things out of the view. So look forward to that because I know I'm going to. So hey man, have a good day. Keep the rubber on the road. Keep it between the lines. Unless you're getting sideways, power shift that thing, man. Have a good day.